guys. Spending too much time in front of you know, studying, playing games like basketball, football, and even running. Me, Gotcha, come and join us for a fun session of stretching to prevent injuries from playing sports or even sitting too long on 12 September at 11 a.m. Sign up with your gym faster now. See you there. Hey Energize, we are currently on the new series 5 Solars and the 5 Solars is the 5 main points of Martin Luther's 95 Theses in which our salvation is by grace alone, through our faith alone, in Christ alone, as revealed to us in the scripture alone, to the glory of God alone. Last week we talked about Sola Fide. Salvation is a gift that we receive through our faith in Jesus and we are completely 100% saved by Jesus and God declares us righteous or right with Him. Even if we don't do something right, that will not make us any less righteous because we are justified by the blood of Jesus and we have His righteousness in us all the time. So la fide, our salvation is through our faith alone in Jesus, not our work. Next is sola gratia and means grace alone. Grace means unmerited favour or us receiving more than what we should have. Mmm, mm, delicious. Hey! Mm? Those are my chips. You finished my chips. Mom, very, very sorry. Nah, I forgive you. When we forgive someone, that is called mercy. Mmm, delicious. Hey! <gasps> Those are my chips. You finished my chips. Well, I'm really, really sorry. I forgive you. And look what I got! <gasps> More chips to share! Oh wow! This is great! Where we're not just forgiven, but also blessed beyond what we deserve! Everything about salvation from beginning to the end, from God planning it, and sending Jesus down to uh, Jesus dying for our sins and the Holy Spirit living in us is by grace and grace alone. We do not, we did not deserve salvation and we certainly did not earn it, but God graciously, out of His goodness and His loving kindness, gives us the gift of salvation. So everything about salvation is a gift from God that He graciously gave us because of how much He loved us. And nothing about salvation says that oh, we must do some. We must be. We must first be worthy enough for Jesus to save us, or we must be smart enough, or handsome enough, or kind enough to be saved by Jesus. As if there's a minimum level of how we must first be before we can get salvation. It is very important that we understand that our salvation is through grace alone, not because we deserve to be saved. People during Luther's time believed that salvation is something that must be earned, meaning we need to be good enough before we are saved, kind of like earning salvation. But what did the Bible say? Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Salvation is not something that we earn. Imagine this. A 
Did Joy have to do anything before she was saved by the fireman? Like be nice to the fireman or give stuff to the fireman or love the fireman first? Nope. And in the same way, Jesus saved us not because we're good to him or because of how much we love him. He saved us out of his great love for us. Now this is a gift. When you give gifts to your friends or to your parents, Sisters or brother, do you tell them? Hmm? Here's a special gift for you. <gasps> wow! Huh? If you want this gift, first you have to sweep the floor and water the plants. Well, then only I'll give you this gift. But that's not a gift at all. <laughs> that's not what we do, right? Because then it won't be a gift. And if we have to work to earn the gift, it's not a gift. Well, the definition of gift according to Oxford is a thing, giving, a thing given willingly to someone without payment. And Ephesians 2 verse 8 says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. And when we give gifts, it's because... Here's a special gift for you. <gasps> wow! Then why are you giving me this gift? Because I love you. <gasps> Thank you! God gave us the gift of salvation because He loves us. Let's talk about Sola Fide and Sola Gratia. Imagine that this is the gift of salvation. Other than being the one who is receiving this gift, um, we are really not involved in the gift itself. From beginning to the end, God loves, God saves, God forgives and blesses us of the goodness of His heart. And God graciously, sola gratia, giveth the gift of salvation. And faith is how we connect with God's grace. We receive this free gift of salvation through sola fide, our faith alone in Jesus. When we believe that He is our Lord and Saviour and welcome Him into our lives. So back to the burning building. Joy was saved by the fireman going to save her. Even at the cost of his life, the fireman went into the burning building to save Joy. Joy did nothing to deserve it. That is great. Faith is when Joy decided to allow or trust that the fireman is going to come and find her and save her. Rather than running up and down the building trying to escape on her own effort where she might end up getting stuck in dangerous situations. And in the parable of the great banquet, banquet is banquet is like a party or a great feast. And Jesus tells us that God had prepared a great banquet for us. And he invited his servants to invite people from everywhere, even those who were poor, blind, lame, bad, or good. The king did not care about their status, their goodness, or their worth. He said, "Invite everyone." And so the banquet was filled with banquet hall was filled with people. But there is one part which I have always thought was weird. See, the king saw a man who was not wearing wedding clothes and ordered his servant to throw him out into the darkness. On one hand, I understand the master. If I have a huge banquet and it is a wedding banquet of my son, but suddenly one of the guests attend without wearing the appropriate clothes, I'll be so mad. On the other hand, well, the master did tell the servant to invite anyone and everyone. What if that man is so poor? What if he have no money to even buy wedding clothes in the first place? Why aren't you wearing wedding clothes? I am not. No, you're not. You're not wearing the clothes I gave you to wear. But the clothes.
clothes I'm wearing are way cooler. The guy at the store said this is the latest fashion. I worked so hard and spent one million dollars on this. This is my banquet. You should be wearing what I gave you to wear. Guards, throw her out. In those days, when there is an important banquet, the host will always want to make sure the guest is wearing their best, or at least wearing appropriately. And so they will give their guests wedding robes to wear to the banquet. And why are robes so important? Isaiah 61 verse 10 says, God has clothed us with garments of salvation and wrapped us in a robe of His Righteousness. Gas was not wearing the garment of salvation that God gave him to wear. He was not wearing Jesus' righteousness on him. And because he was not wearing the robe of and because he was wearing the robe of his own righteousness, he could not attend a great feast and was thrown out. See, God has prepared a great feast for us, not just in heaven, but also here on earth. And he has so many blessings and promises that he wants to pour out upon us. So la scriptura, the scripture alone tells us about our salvation, that sola gratia, only by grace, God gave us the gift of salvation and clothed us with Jesus' righteousness, not because we deserve it, sola fide. Through faith alone, we receive the gift of salvation and are clothed in Jesus with Jesus' righteousness. When we are clothed with Jesus' righteousness, we can boldly go to God's great banquet and enjoy the amazing feast and blessing that He has prepared for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your only Son, Jesus, down to pay the penalty that we were supposed to pay for sins. And because of what Jesus has done on the cross, we are now clothed with His righteousness. We are wrapped up in your garment, Heavenly Father, and we are child of God most high and we can boldly go to the great feast that you have prepared for us. Grant us your divine wisdom, favor, protection upon our life and help us to grow deeper in your word as you reveal more and more and more the revelations about yourself and help us to show, share your love to others as well. Help us in our studies that we can learn faster do our homework faster so that we can play more and not only play more but also spend more time in your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen! You stole my chips. <laughs> Sorry, you stole my chips. You're eating my chips. Finished! Huh? My banquet. You should be spending 